Let's talk about Yorkshire puddings, those fluffy little nests of goodness that you can fill up with turkey, chicken, beef, whatever you've got to hand, you can fill them up with whatever the bloody hell you like. I've got tonight a few leftover pigs in blankets. We also have some of the wife's roast potatoes. Now we did go head to head this evening and um, I only have three left. So you can guess who won. <laughs> My recipe consists of nothing more than eggs, flour, milk, water and salt. Depending on how you like them, you swap out the water for carbonated water if you want them more aerated and kind of hollow, crispy, dry is probably the wrong word. It's not how I like them. I prefer them without the water, without the sparkling water, because then they end up a little bit more of a, a Yorkshire pudding in that they are fluffier inside. They don't turn to a dust when you crush them and they are dead easy to make. If you don't know how to make Yorkshire puddings, I'm gonna show you in as simple as three ingredients in the oven, 28 minutes, out, Boom, done. Now I'm gonna start with two eggs in a glass. None of this needs to be measured accurately because we'll use the glass once we've broken the eggs to find our first kind of mark. I'll explain, it's dead easy. It's so simple. Right, so I'm gonna try and do this all in one take. Well, one scene minus the swear words, all right? So any glass jug you've got, use a mug if you, if you want, you know, for what you use for cups of teas and coffees. I'm using something clear so that you can kind of see it. And I can use it as a reference. Now, all we want to do is crack two eggs. You probably can't see that. But we're going to crack two eggs into our glass. And we're going to find the reference line. That's almost half of where they fill. Now, this is enough for six decent sized Yorkshire puddings. If you want to make a big one, if you want to make one that you can roll out and stuff it with all of your leftover Christmas goodness and you want to roll it up and bake it again, then use a few more eggs. That is our reference point, okay? So we are just under halfway full on that glass. It's so easy, honestly. Again, trying to do this all in as little takes as possible. We get ourselves a bowl, get our eggs, put our eggs in the bowl and we match every single ingredient, eggs, the flour, and the milk, exactly, or as exact as we can get. Just under halfway on the glass, straight into the bowl, and we give that a little bit of a whisk, just to get some air in there. Mm. Now you can beat this for as long as you want. All you're trying to do is scramble the egg and get some air introduced into your mix. Because I'm not using carbonated water, I'm using milk. Because I like a little bit of kind of cloud inside my Yorkshire pudding. Now, once you've done that, just click that on. I'm having some real issues with microphones lately and the fact that I've used all the flour. I'm also baking bread. These are gonna be burger rolls for something that I can't yet share on the channel because I'm doing a Christmas food series and it's kind of like my own recipes. I like to make things that are original, so I'll keep all of that kind of to one side. Although, I'm gonna show you one more thing. <laughs> Check these out. These are my mini burger rolls. They are sesame seeded. They are egg washed. They're too bright to see because of my studio light that's um, just too bright, all right? But this is gonna come up in another video. Uh, and like I say, this is gonna be for a festive series here on the channel. Now, back to the Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> we use quite a lot of flour. Um, here in this kitchen, we bake pretty much every single day. And if it's not me baking, it's my wife. So plain flour will do. Don't use zero, zero. Save that for your pizza bases and your main bread recipes. All we're gonna do is use the same glass 
We're not sifting anything here. It's not essential. You don't need to worry about lumps um, because we can whisk those out. If this was zero, zero, I would, I'd measure it more accurately, but it's not. Tamp it down. Just under half, not quite. It's on that side. Just under half. And that goes in to our two eggs. We match the contents. I don't know if you can hear me. Microphone issues. Now we just want to mix that. Don't overdo it because we don't want to develop the gluten. Okay. What we're trying to do is just incorporate the ingredients. If we were to overbeat this or put it into a machine or, a, you know, use an electric double whisk, for example, we're going to develop it too much that when it's in the oven, it's not going to want to rise because it's going to be really tight. So we're just looking to incorporate the mixture with the flour, you know, the egg milk flour, just enough, you know, that we get most of the lumps out. without overdoing it. That's it. And before we do anything else, we need a pinch of salt. And that comes out quite violently. That's, that's a decent pinch of salt. The most crucial step in any Yorkshire pudding recipe is that you let that rest. You can put it in the fridge, you can put it on your countertop, you can leave it where you like. After about 30 minutes, you'll find that a lot of the lumps have gone anyway. The gluten has started to relax. We've just brought the ingredients together. That's it. Now, if you saw the intro, you'll know how amazing these will come out. I've recently just bought a brand new tray, which I've never seen before. It's called a Yorkshire pudding tray, <laughs> of all things. I normally use like a cupcake mold, or let me show you. I've just recently bought uh, this as well. This is a carbon steel oven tray. That is gonna be featured in quite a few videos, I'm sure. I'm gonna use that to death. But normally, for Yorkshire puddings, I'll just use something like that. Just like a bog standard muffin tray. For this recipe, I can't show you again because the, uh, the bread's on it. I thought they'd make really good bread proofing pans. And do you know what? I wasn't wrong. So two of these are seeded. Let's click that light there and show you guys. Two of these are seeded and two of them are just egg washed. Um, not egg washed, sorry, milk washed. Milk on top of bread acts as a glue better than egg wash. So if you do want to add things like sesame seeds um, without them falling off, then you can. So anyway, that's the bread. I'm going to put that in the oven. I'll show you that on the shorts feed. Um, where I spend most of my time recently, guys, trying to create content um, for the masses. 344,000 views in 45 days, can't be wrong. Um, that's it. After half an hour, I'll show you what we do with it. I just need to have a quick tidy up before the wife gets up and um, does a nut, basically. All right, because I'm a bit of a messy cook. Again, if you want them more aerated and you want them more kind of you can crush them and turn them to dust and there's no real innards, there's no pancakey texture on the inside. Split the milk 50-50 with carbonated water. They come out more kind of dry. I don't like that as much. If you've ever had a roast at the Toby Carvery and you've tried the Yorkshire puddings and one minute they're kind of all right and the next minute they're just dust. Too much water and not enough of the more expensive ingredient, milk. It's been 40 minutes, my bread is now out the oven. I'm gonna do a side by side to what I normally do because this is a little bit of a trial for me as well. Um, in that I just use a generic, this has been used this evening, that's why it's a little bit uh, grubby. Um, yeah, I can assure you it's clean. <laughs> I've been baking all evening. So Jamie Oliver thinks he invented this. He didn't, I did. Now about, oh my, 32. When I was about nine years old, 23 years ago, I first done this. Now, I have seen on TV, 
because I do watch cooking programs now and again. Um, this being done, uh, I can assure you it's a Joe Mills invention. It's not verified, however, it is. You want kind of like an even volume of oil. Now, I also have this, which I know not everyone's gonna have, that's why I'm not using it. Might be a bit grossed out, what's all that inside? That is uh, duck fat and a bit of duck juice together from a duck that I roasted yesterday, which will send these Yorkshire puddings into a realm of flavor that you won't experience unless you use duck fat. Now, not everyone's got a whole duck to roast, I'm well aware. So I've just used a little bit of veg oil. You wanna use an oil that will take high heat. Don't use corn, although it says it can take a high heat, it burns and it's, it's, it's quite violent when it burns, it smokes and it's quite a thick smoke. Just use veg, use sunflower, use something that you can deep fry in, essentially. And this is the, the trick that Jamie Oliver thinks he invented, but he didn't. And that is that you can part fill one to four centimeters, for example, and you can tilt the pan and pour it into two. Now I do two, and I, I'll try and get behind the camera here and show you. I just tilt the pan and I try and even it out to the floor I'm stood on, which is not even. <laughs> and I just pour until we get to the bottom. Now what I normally do, which I might have to do here, because my floor's a bit uneven, waste not, want not. I'll pour directly into something else and I'll pour way beyond 90 degrees, just like that. And when it starts to pour out of the bottom, they are all perfectly aligned with the right amount of oil. There's no space in this tray of six that has more oil than its neighbor. So they should all rise evenly. And what I'll do with the tray below is I'll crack open another oil and I'll fill these up in exactly the same way. I'm not even sure I need to. Oy. Maybe just a, a drop. But yeah, just enough. A centimetre or below. Don't overdo it, honestly, because they'll come out really oily and we don't want that. I've got pop probably a half a centimetre in each one of these trays that I can't, I can't show you because it wants to spill out. So that's gonna go in my oven, or your oven, if you're making this as well, um, at the hottest temperature you can get for about nine to 10 minutes, um, or until it's smoking. 250. So I'm gonna put these in at 250. If your oven only goes up to 180, leave them until they start to smoke, to the point where you wouldn't wanna put your finger in the oil, basically. Now what I am gonna do is pour that into a jug because it's gonna make pouring these into the oven, into the trays a little bit more uh, easy. Ooh, I think we've made just enough. That do. And this is also your pancake mix. So if you don't get round to using it all, maybe you only want a few Yorkshire puddings, put it in the fridge, save it. In the morning, get yourself a really hot pan. And that is the most amazing aerated batter, better the longer it's left for Yorkshire puddings and pancakes. So get your jam and your strawberries on standby um, for any leftovers. I don't think I'm gonna have much left because I'm making quite a few here. We need the oil to remain hot, which I know it is because it's burning my eyes. If you ever heat up oil in your oven for something like this and your eyes start stinging, it's kind of time to add your, your mixture and uh, there you go, <laughs> right on cue, let the oven do the work. So I'll bring you over, I'll try and do it in one take, and, um, and we'll go from there. Work as quickly as you can while being safe. We're gonna bring this out, okay. We're gonna directly add our batter straight in. We're gonna go for kind of half a fill. Now, normally I use a teaspoon underneath so that we don't get too many drips. I haven't done that today because I'm rushing to try and show you guys how this works. Can you hear it? I'm not sure. 
but already, can you see the bubble in action? Straight back in the oven on the highest temperature. Don't leave them on the highest temperature. We want to replace the heat that we've just lost for just a few minutes. So just a few minutes on the highest heat setting and then turn it down to around 180 for about 28 minutes. Give or take your own oven. All right. All right more cleaning up to do. Yeah. Never ends. It's got to be said, don't just leave the room and let them sort of fend for themselves. Keep an eye on them. My timer hasn't yet gone off, but I'm going to open the door because I think they're done. And they look amazing. The difference in that brand new tray that I bought, that Yorkshire pudding tray versus what I normally make is night and day. I can't wait to show you. Check this out. That's the Yorkshire pudding tray and that is what I normally make. I'm going to get them out of the oven and we'll have a closer look. But my God, look how much they've risen from that little thin drizzle of oil. Now I know they're not consistent. I'm pretty sure you guys can appreciate um, the fact that I tried to get as many as possible um, for the video. <laughs> Let me get them out. If you get your Yorkshire puddings out prematurely, they will instantly start to deflate. So we're looking for signs of just that. They look amazing. That one in particular looks oh my word oh they're so light crispy Woo. yeah no signs of shrinking yeah they're definitely a winner now what I normally do is just put them to the edge of the tray just to drain any oil and just before serving if I'm making a roast dinner I'll put them back in the oven minus the tray just so we can get rid of some of that but that's all reusable so of course if you have used anything similar save it right let's get the other ones out try and do this in one take Woo! and immediately if they start to shrink i put them straight back into the oven oh my word so this is what I normally make. This is just an, a, uh, a muffin tray. And as you can see, they work. And they're all pretty consistent in size. If I was to, you know, these last two didn't get as much batter as the first four. Um, but these are, these are next level. These are actual cups. my word i need to start selling these trays they are incredible mm. Mm. now these are light they're fluffy they tear apart and inside we <laughs> oh my god they're so hot we have that pancakiness which I quite like. Mm. Just imagine how many brownie points you'll get in the house if on a Sunday or for Christmas you prepared such a feast. I mean, some veg. That's definitely missing. Some gravy. And, you know, friends and family to share this with. You would get some serious brownie points. Right, I've got to try and find a good angle where I can get a decent bite. Here we go. Are you ready? Mm. Oh my word. <laughs> they are killer. Absolutely delicious. Not greasy, because I did put them back in the oven, as I said I do. Normally just before a roast. If you follow the recipe that I've shown you, you won't be disappointed. Make sure to subscribe. Cheers. 
I'm gonna get off there. A few more of these and that'll probably cave in. <laughs>